Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, the city passes a new ordinance to help more animals get into loving homes and we tell you how easy it is to adopt the perfect pet. Here to discuss these topics and a whole lot more is the councilwoman who represents Ward 2. You know who it is, Victoria Seaman. Welcome back. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Hard to believe we are well into 2022 all of a sudden. Can't here. even believe it. It's like poof. We've already passed Valentine's Day. I know, I know, right? and, and we're off and running here, but uh, heading into, we're, spring's right around the corner, believe it or not. <laughs> so, uh, good to have you on the program. I want to talk to everybody out there. We, we, we discussed this last time around, but the ward boundaries changed a little bit uh, because of redistricting. We'll talk a little bit about Very why. Very little, yeah, little in my ward, yeah, yeah. but we have a whole lot of new businesses. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. So. We're going to show you, these were the old ward maps. This is what uh, Ward 2 and the rest of the city looked like prior to the redistricting, which took place uh, here back the end of 2021. But now you see how it morphs there on the side, on the east side. That is what changed in Ward 2. And Councilwoman, tell everybody one more time, we, we've discussed this in the past, but so that everybody understands the change. Why do we redistrict every 10 years? What's the purpose? Well, the census, the population mm -hmm. increases, and we have to um, look at that and make sure that everybody's represented. You had a big growth spurt mm -hmm. in Ward 6, mm -hmm. and so you have to even out all these districts. Yeah. And so there's about the same number of people Same in all number the districts, of yeah. people, mm -hmm. certain criteria that needs to be done, and it's done about every 10 years. Right, right. And I, I think it worked out well in the city, and uh, I'm excited. Yeah, it worked out really well. Uh, you don't want one council member representing, say, 90,000 residents and another representing 150. 100, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so the idea, you guys all represent around 110? About so. 110, yeah, yes. Yeah, each of yes. you. So, uh, I think the biggest change happened in Ward 6 It did. Ward That's where most of the growth is, yeah. right, right. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that on this program as well. But those were the changes for the folks in Ward 2. Little change. A little change, just on that east side. Uh, you picked up some some new businesses right I now. I did. We're gonna, I'm we're very talk excited about, about yeah, those new businesses. And there are a lot of the businesses yeah. that I frequent. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. it was amazing. Now I can uh, go out and have them on my program. Right. right exactly. And uh, we should tell everybody you and I remain in Ward 2. So that yes, was good. That's you know? <laughs> so we didn't change, but <laughs> many did. About 40,000 Las Vegas residents uh, changed, had their ward change. If your ward did change, we sent you a little card in the mail letting you know that it changed and then it was really simple. You could use the QR code on there or go onto our website, enter your address, it'll tell you what your new ward is. Correct. Yeah. You could subscribe to your new council members email, uh, email if you wanted to and, and all of that. So uh, we may try to make it as simple. We are as so friendly. We are. We're constituent we are. friendly. We're business friendly. Yeah. That's what I love about this city. And, and user Vegas. friendly in this case, user too. User friendly, yeah. so, absolutely. Well, one thing since you've been on the program last, I know this is near and dear to you, as a new ordinance was passed uh, allowing more animals to be owned uh, in the city of Las Vegas. You posted this on Facebook. You said, I'm pleased to announce that my ordinance to increase the number of animals residents of the city of Las Vegas can own from three to four without special permits passed yesterday at city council. And oh, who is that? Young, young guy right there. <laughs> that is Blue Theo, also known as Bully, and he's my little friend. She and you know <laughs> they have such a good life at home. And you go to these shelters, and you just want for all animals. Yeah. And this was part of the reason that we did that. Is after COVID, there were so many people that couldn't keep their animals, and they were surrendered, and just a lot of a lot of like yeah. people lost their homes. So did the pets. Yeah. And so one of the reasons for doing this was to make sure that if somebody can take care of four animals as opposed to three, that they could have a loving right. home. And so I, I'm pretty excited about yeah, this. Yeah, you were the sponsor of that ordinance. Uh, you shepherded it through the process. Uh, in the past, as Councilwoman said, uh, the maximum number of animals you could have in a household uh, in the city of Las Vegas was three, but now it's increased to four. And, you know, you mentioned uh, animals being turned over to the uh, to the to the foundation yeah. to the shelter. We saw that during the recession as well. People mm -hmm. couldn't keep up their home. They walked away from their homes in some cases, and they left their animals behind, left their yeah. pets behind. Yes, and we so want to make sure that they yeah. have good homes. And. I'm hearing, I'm not sure yet, but I think other municipalities are going to follow suit. Yeah. Uh, we're talking to them about some of the things that we're changing, and I hope that they do because there's just too many animals looking for a home. I mean, 
there's all kinds of animals. We talked about yeah. this earlier. Turtles, pigs, rabbits, um, guinea pigs. We're going to talk about that right <laughs> now, in fact, uh, because you can own now four pets in your home instead of just three. Uh, Councilwoman has uh, stepped up the opportunity to tell you about some of the animals that are available, and they really run the gamut here. You got uh, pot-bellied pigs. There, there you go. That pig's not really interested in being on he camera. He wasn't this, interested in but me, this but dog, he's friendly. This dog is a whole different story. Yeah, he loving yeah. life there. Yeah. So, and and all of these pets are wonderful. They would make. Uh, good pets in the home. No, those These are, are turtles. turtles. Yeah, I got some and turtles. They were a lot of fun. I didn't even imagine how much fun turtles would be, but whatever kind of pet you want, the Animal Foundation and other uh, charitable organizations yeah. have Adoption them. Agencies, yeah. And you, you know, it's only a matter of um, getting out there and seeing which ones will be good in your home. The truth of the matter is, and I think this is what Councilwoman has, has really tried to point out, is the pet overpopulation in Las Vegas and, and across the country is just through the roof. So any opportunity that you have to adopt an animal versus uh, trying to get them from someplace else, uh, it, it's hugely appreciated because yeah. there are so many animals that, that need a home. They're just, they're in the they shelter. They truly do yeah. need a yeah. home and they're just wonderful, wonderful animals. Yeah. I go there weekly and do these filming uh -huh. and I got to tell you they're So how friendly. has it gone? Have you, did the pig get a home? Did the pig find a home? I'm not sure yet? if the yeah, pig so. got a home yet but um, well, you know every week now on Tuesday mm -hmm. we are doing the adopt a pet um, series uh -huh. so you can see what's available. You can get some kind of idea. Right. Now there's many more animals oh, available yes, exactly. but we just want to feature some so that people can get an idea of what they can adopt. Well, I think you, you get that spark lit, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, that's a really cute dog, yeah. you know, okay, I'm yeah. gonna go down and then you might adopt a different dog, but the idea is For that sure. you, yeah, you, get, you got interested to do yeah. it. Yeah, and so they should, people or, should go down. They yeah. should email them, call them, or just show up. Um, and see if they can look at some animals for adoption. And they have a lot of rabbits. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're adorable. They're the just bunnies adorable. And, uh, I, you were telling me all kinds of things in there. Just you name it, ferrets and everything. Yeah, yeah, everything. amazing. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of people that do everything, we love them. Uh, you posted this on Facebook. You said, today I had the honor to recognize my dear friends at Red Rock Search and Rescue for their 10-year anniversary of service and dedication to our community. And Councilwoman, tell everybody what they do at Red Rock Search and Rescue. The name is pretty self-explanatory, but fill them in. These are the people who go out and find your loved ones. Um, if they're lost at Red Rock, or um, they've also solved some um, lost people or homicides, yeah. or whatever it may be. When Metro runs out of time and resources, these are the guys that volunteer all their time to go out and solve whether again whether it be someone who's just I'm been missing for 10 so years rude. or missing for five no, years or someone who's been lost these are the guys that go out and do that and believe me they do it on a shoestring of a budget yeah, and and they're all volunteers uh, they're folks all these volunteers. all these folks are either retired or they have other jobs and then do this on the side there's all this extensive training that goes along with it uh it, 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 plus they're out in all, all kinds of weather. All kinds of weather. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, you know, they have a system where they have them on call and they'll go out and, and find, if somebody has dementia or. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's been a little bit of everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. These are the guys that will go out and find your loved ones. Right. So um, I really was happy to recognize them. It's not enough. I mean, these guys volunteer so many hundreds of hours. They do. People who are missing, as Councilwoman said, uh, sometimes they suffer from um, a, 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 a mental issue. Uh, sometimes they've disappeared altogether. Um, sometimes uh, they're hiking and get lost or stranded. And so, again, if, if the uh, Metropolitan Police Department, Metro, doesn't have the resource to send out dozens and dozens of people to look. Of officers. Yeah, yeah these but guys these, do. They work very closely with Metro as mm -hmm. well. And I can't tell you how many things, that, how many missing people they've resolved and just all on volunteer time. Yeah. Yeah, so kudos to them. Congratulations. It seems like it's hardly 10 years has I gone know. by since they first founded. but. Uh, They've, uh, they've done tremendous work in those 10 years. And then also, uh, I want to tell everybody too, you had a um, government affairs luncheon at City Hall. This took place back on February 5th. 
This is our, sometimes councilwomen, people feel like elected officials don't work closely enough together. But here you are uh, talking with other uh, lawmakers, these are legislators specifically, uh, on common issues that affect the city and, and, our, and our residents here. Well, what I noticed is being in the legislature uh, that we didn't have enough relationship right. with other so you had uh, said, yeah. local governments. And I want to change that mm -hmm. because I was in the legislature and they only meet yes, biannually. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure that we weren't calling them at the last minute for issues that we're having at the city. And we noticed with our lobbyists from the city during COVID, it was really hard to get in touch or even meet with right. legislatures. So what I thought was we really need to establish that relationship before they go into session and make sure that they understood some of the issues. They, they knew who we are so they can reach out to us if there's questions about certain legislation just to establish the relationship. Right. So again, we broke bread together. It was, it was a great meeting. I plan to continue this another couple times before the session, going up to Reno and having a meeting with yep. the Northern legislators and maybe having one more down here. There's just so many issues that we can share uh, share our ideas on. So important because there's so much overlap. Uh, you represent uh, a certain ward within the city. They represent certain districts within the state. And many times those overlap, that you have the same constituents in, in those areas. So it's nice when the elected officials are on the same page. Absolutely. Uh, talking and the, and another, COVID so. brought a lot of this yeah. uh, to our attention mm -hmm. because we were able to see that, you know, it's really hard sometimes to when they're in the last minute of the session to be in touch with them or talk mm -hmm. with them so it's really important to establish that relationship ahead of time all right and uh, that's that's always going to yield good things no question about it and then uh, this was interesting uh, councilwoman you have to fill us in on this uh, you posted this on facebook you said i was proud to be a sponsor of awareness is prevention screening tonight of groomed at city hall now you'll have to tell us what awareness uh, is prevention is all about? Well, it's uh, a woman who started it named Lena Walther, and she actually uh, brings awareness to trafficking, uh -huh. to human trafficking. And she's done great work in it. When I first got elected, she was one of the first people that I recognized for the work that she's doing. Um, she works to do the prevention part of it. So we have a lot of groups that go out after the fact. But what I love about Awareness is Prevention is that they go into different places. They educate law enforcement. They educate um, in schools for the to prevent human trafficking to try to bring that awareness and i i just think they're doing an amazing job and they wanted to sp an event so we sponsored it here at city hall for them and it was a a, a film a that they, film. Were, they were screening okay. they brought in a film about you know bringing again awareness to prevention mm. it's a bigger problem in especially in southern nevada than you would think oh, uh, yeah. because of all the tourism that we have here and it's something that Actually, one of our, our members of our fire department here uh, set up a program to help other first responders recognize people who might be victims of human trafficking. She might be working yeah, with some yeah. of those folks. What some of those signs, some of those telltale mm -hmm. signs might be, what some of the, the indicators are, uh, and to be on the lookout for those if you go on a medical call or you respond to a, a, a fire or whatever it might be. That's so important. It, it really is. And uh, when you get the police, the fire department, organizations like this all working together, you can really make an inroad in trying to, make to stem the tide. Yeah. Exactly. Good stuff. So, and then Councilwoman, another organization, really great, uh, the Collaboration Center Foundation, an organization, I don't think a lot of people know about this. It's fairly but, new. It's fairly new, but they help people with developmental delays, and these were some of the memorial pavers that they had put in, obviously as an effort to, to raise funds but uh, also to raise uh, awareness of what the center does. Yes, and, uh, it's a collaboration mm -hmm. center that Linda Tache started. This is the woman who started Grant a Gift, mm -hmm. which has become a very successful organization. And ne this is her new project. Mm -hmm. And the collaboration center deals with all developmental delays. It could be Down syndrome, autism. We were talking yeah. about that. They actually, educate these um, children and they're able to live on their own mm -hmm. and work and be a big 
contribute to society. And Absolutely. I love what she's doing. She's doing an amazing job. And so we support them. And that was where they had their, um, the paver, mm -hmm. you know, unveiling, unveiling there. there. Yeah. And it yeah. was just a great event. Well, uh, you and I were talking, we know firsthand uh, the impact that organizations can have. Uh, I have a nephew who has autism, a uh, member of your staff, Dave, uh, his son uh, suffers uh, with autism or, or has autism. And uh, the whole point there is, I think I obviously used a word that we we're getting away from, is they don't suffer, they're learning how to still contribute to, to society. Exactly. And um, it's amazing uh, with, with the proper support and education what they can accomplish. It's and, organizations and, like right. this. So. And so she's doing an amazing job and we want to always show our support. Yeah, exactly. Well, good luck to them. And again, for people that don't have not heard of the organization, again, the Collaboration Center Foundation, uh, again, for people, for people with uh, developmental delays of all types, um, if you're looking for support, resource, this is a group. This that is the place you to go. Reach yes. out to them, exactly. Absolutely. Right? And then, uh, Councilwoman, we had the Just One Project. Uh, this is another group that does amazing work. They've been honored at City Council in the past, but Tireless, uh, this group helps those uh, who really are, are kind of living on the edge, uh, whether it be of living on the edge of the street, living on the edge of losing their home. Uh, and they need yeah. food or whatever yeah. they need. But what I love about this group, and, and again, I'm very fortunate with my job because I get to meet all these people who do these amazing um, Just One Project, an amazing organization. And look how young she is. She's a very young woman, very energetic, and she started this as a storefront, and now it's- it, It's blossomed, it's yeah, it's blossomed. huge. It's mm blossomed, -hmm. it's huge. And, and she showed us plans of even expanding more, and still very enthusi enthusiastic about it, probably from the day she ever yeah. thought of it. And what they do is they make sure no one goes without a meal that needs it. Right. So when people call them, even after they've done their deliveries, they will make sure that people get food. Yeah. And so I, I just think it's they an amazing. They connect people with housing resource, yes, et cetera. Yes, everything, uh, Again, everything. people who are really um, kind of in that very tenuous uh, situation where they, they're, they're, they're um, they're expanding. Yeah, yeah. They're, and they're their doing whole a lot of great things. Outlook on life could change dramatically, uh, and, and and they're there to make sure that we're going to sustain you through these very, very tough times, very, 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 very critical moments where people. Are, these are the organizations that can make a difference from you being homeless or not. Exactly. With the housing, they're working very um, close with the county. I hear mm -hmm. now and making sure that people are are finding homes. Right. Right. affordable and, housing and and food too so yeah uh, very good and then uh, we, we love talking about this councilwoman uh, on your program uh, <laughs> you have a, uh, a segment that you've been featuring uh, for, for a long time now called small business Saturday this is a great opportunity uh, you know these folks this is your last segment here this is the LA real estate yeah and group. these this group is new to Ward two right with the redistricting so I am so grateful that we now have new businesses in Ward 2. So they were bordering the ward before, and so we've reached out to them, and in the next three or four weeks, we'll be featuring their businesses, and it's a lot of fun. Not only do I get to meet all these wonderful mm. business owners, but I get to hear about their businesses yeah. and bring it to the constituents. Yeah. And it's just every type of business you can imagine. We have some great segments coming up on consignment stores. There's <laughs> two of them that are in the new district, you know, the new ward. And so I'm pretty excited because uh, I just love featuring businesses. Well, some of our favorite restaurants, uh, we, oh, we, yeah. we live in Ward 2, I, I learned about on Small Business Saturday. I had no idea uh, what they were, where they were. Now I do, and, and uh, some of these have become very, very popular in our family. The other thing, too, is, you again, you've hit on everything. It's been bridal shops and dry cleaners and realtors and everything you, can you name it. Yeah. Oh, massage. <laughs> right, 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 right. A spa. <laughs> That's right, the spa. Spas, uh -huh. massages, um, 
and now I've started using some of those businesses. Right. We did the salt room and, you know, I had no idea what a salt room is and we went to the salt room <laughs> right. and it's, it's just amazing businesses that you wouldn't normally know about. Well, so tell everybody out there, Councilwoman, if they're interested, they're like, hey, I have a small business and I live in, uh, it's in Ward 2. Yeah, <laughs> all you have to do, even if you're not sure, you just need to call my office at 702-229-2420 uh, or email us at ward2 at lasvegasnevada.gov. My staff will look up your, the address of your business. And for sure, if you have see, received a welcome certificate in your new business from my office, you know that you're yeah. in Ward 2. And just contact us, and we're happy to come out and film your business and put it all over social media. Yeah, and it's very effective. Uh, it, it, it's got a wide reach. You have a lot of followers, and you're going to get the word out. And again, for those of us who also live in Ward 2, it's just a great way to learn about things in the area that it's like I had no idea that this or that was there, but now, but now I do. So, yeah. and I think it's great because a lot of these businesses don't have. They are small business. We've we've just come through a pandemic, or, or we're still coming through it, and they don't have a lot of money for marketing or advertising. Right. So this is a way to help get the word out, Absolutely. and it's it's a win win because you help tell people about the business, and then the public learns that, hey, a lot of these places are really within you know, a uh, short distance of my home, so good For stuff. For sure, we're really excited. That's one of the things I love to do. Good stuff. It's a stuff. lot of fun. So again, if you're interested uh, in, in being featured, uh, want to hear from you and otherwise tune in if you want to learn about uh, some small businesses that are that are going very strong in Ward 2 uh, that you might want to frequent. So, And then Councilwoman, uh, the, another thing, another mainstay within Ward 2 is your breakfast buzz uh, and Ward 2 Biz. You posted this on Facebook. You said, today we had a very busy morning with our breakfast buzz and Ward 2 Biz at Rachel's Kitchen. And Rachel's a great place, but you had a great turnout. Look at all these folks showing uh, up. We, to we filled the restaurant. Um, and Metro came, mm -hmm. which they normally do. Our marshals come, and they they just answer a lot of questions that constituents have, and we break bread together. This is one of the traditions I started in Ward Two, and it is really a success. And now we've got regulars, and we always have new people coming, and other people get to know each other in Ward Two. Exactly share common issues you hear a lot of that it's like very uh, important for public safety right exactly Get to know who lives mm -hmm. close to yeah, you yeah 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 and i think what's really nice about those segments is they're very informal a very a low key i think sometimes people feel like well i have to go down to city hall to meet the councilwoman or the councilman or the mayor it's like a little maybe a little intimidating but to sit down and have coffee with someone or some breakfast and talk about what's going on in the neighborhood it's a whole different thing yes. so and these are the things that I just love to yeah. do anyway. They're a lot of fun. I get to know the constituents yeah. and they feel comfortable with me. I feel comfortable with them and we just have a good time. Yeah, great partnership too with, uh, as you mentioned, Metro, some of the other uh, jurisdictions, the other entities within, within the jurisdiction uh, will also participate. So if people have questions related to whatever it might be, um, they're there on hand yeah, to help Yeah, it's always as well very helpful. Yeah, um, because we talked about this, there's so much overlap between state projects, road projects, for example, and what the police are doing and what other entities are doing. And, and people don't know, well, is that a city project or is it a county That's project true. or, or, or who, who's true. in charge? So, but uh, you sort it all out for them. <laughs> so, well, uh, Councilwoman, great show, a lot going on in, in Ward 2. And we wanna tell everybody out there, you mentioned this as well, uh, we always want to hear from you. So if you have something you'd like to share with Councilwoman Victoria Seaman, you can find her on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also contact her by picking up the phone. The number is 702-229-2420, as she mentioned, or you can send her an email. Her address is ward2 at lasvegasnevada.gov, and she or one of her great staff will get right back to you and answer any of your questions. We always point out too, even if it's not a city issue, we'll get you connected with the right That's the correct. right entity or jurisdiction that will help yeah. uh, fix your problem. For yeah, you, we so. want people to feel free to call my office yeah. for anything. Yeah. And they you know, do. We can, <laughs> they do. They do. And that's okay because we get to know them. We can navigate wherever they need to yeah. go. And, you know, we even get calls from other um, wards because they don't know which ward they're in. And we'll just help yeah. them get to where they need to go. Get it all straightened out. And of course, Dave on your staff or 
Bree or Zach. Zach. Uh, and is, Zach is new. Zach we have to is get, new. Have to get Zach on the program in on the future our next and introduce one, him we'll uh, introduce to everyone. Yeah, so. yeah. Great, great, great. I call him a kid, but he's a great guy. He just graduated from UNLV. And we're so happy to have yeah, him. Yeah, and, and he's going to help you, you know, stay on top of all the issues oh, within yeah. the ward. So, oh, yeah. all right. Well, Councilman, great job. Uh, we just uh, have a lot to talk about here. So I hope everybody, um, you know, if you have questions, you could write all that down. Just reach out to our office and they'll answer your questions for you. So <laughs> we want to tell everybody, uh, don't miss our next show uh, beginning on March 3rd with Ward 5 City Councilman Cedric Creer. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Also, watch for our QR code during the closing credits of this show to download and subscribe to our newsletter. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time around.